How many of us go about our daily lives forgetting what has been done for us on that day? Through his sacrifice, all our problems were given a solution. And to this day, we still ask why. Why do I feel lonely? Why am I sick? Why doesn't God help me? Why am I so depressed? Why do I even need God? My life was literally a mess. I was suffering inside and out. So when I reached secondary school, my eyes kind of opened um, to the boys, to um, music, swearing, and I literally done everything I needed to do to call the attention of God. I'm literally just a transformed person. I don't suffer with any of the problems, any of the addictions anymore. And literally, it's, I only have God to thank for that. My life was a mess. I was destroyed on the inside and because of hate, because of grudges, my life literally took a toll. By coming to the help center, I was accepted as I was. God gave me a new life. This Good Friday, come to put an end on all your difficulties, troubles and worries. Join us at any universal church near you. Let your Friday be a good Friday. It's happening in every neighborhood. Down every street. Sickness. Addiction. And violence has been turning countless homes into crime scenes. Suffering. Depressed. Alone. Suicidal. A very good evening to all. May God bless you. Once again, we are in your program, Problems and Solutions, to give you and to bring to you uh, stories of people who overcome and to bring you the opportunity for your life to be totally blessed. Today is Thursday. I'm, tomorrow uh, will be Good Friday, a remarkable day in the life of people where our Lord Jesus died for us. But he's not deaf. He rose on the third day. And he gave us, through that sacrifice, he gave us the opportunity to have a different life. Because Jesus carried upon him our sadness, our sickness, our curses, our iniquities. He carried upon him every type of sin. You know, my dear friend, I would like you just to think with me. If a person to carry one problem is so hard, maybe you are there, watch me, and you are carrying one problem. You are carrying one problem in your life doesn't matter what is the size of your problem and how big that problem it is, but you are carrying that problem sometimes for months or years. And sometimes you feel so down, you feel so sad, you feel so weak. Imagine when the Lord Jesus carried upon him on that cross all the curses, all the problems of the world. And he did that for us to be here today and to have an opportunity of a new life. We have people who have been receiving this new life by attending our prayers at the Universal Church. We're going to watch right now the testimony of Leandra that she found life. She had a life of curse. But the moment that she understood that Jesus already had paid the price, she decided to give her step of faith. And through the faith in God, through the faith in God, she overcame. Watch her testimony very careful and we'll be back with you straight after. In the meantime, you'd like to be in contact with us. Below of your screen, there are our details where you have, where we have people available to talk to you right now. My life before was a completely mess. 
I was a person that always uh, used to seek attention from other people, especially from my parents. I was a very aggressive person. Uh, I have a little sister, and I used to seek attention from my parents because they were not giving it to me, they were giving it to her, and I used to feel jealous. Only because I wanted two things, attention and love from my parents. So I moved to London in 2015 with my mother to study as well. And uh, to have my mom to have a better job as well, for me to have a better future. And I, I started school, and then plus I didn't know the language, and it was really hard for me. And in my, the way I used to be started getting worse, being aggressive, you know, because I was frustrated. I couldn't speak, you know, couldn't communicate with people. And my mom saw that, and then she invited me to come to this place. And then at first I didn't want to go because I didn't want to mix with people. And when I start coming to this place and use my faith, they were teaching me how to become a better person, how to behave in front of people. I start seeing little changes on me, the way I used to talk to my mom, the way I used to talk to my sister, the way I used to treat her, to my dad and everything. I was like, hmm, hold on. This is really helping me. So I start coming more, I start learning, I start becoming a better person, smiling more, don't care about what people have to say about me. I know I'm beautiful, nobody has to tell me that I'm beautiful to think to myself and believe to myself I'm beautiful, you know. And I started to change and I started to say, oh, mom, thank you. And then my mom started saying, ooh, now you, you want to go to this place all the time. But I was like, yes, because I know who I was before. I know the things I used to suffer. So now that I'm a better person, of course, I'm so happy the way that I am. I'm so happy to myself. I love my parents. I love my little sister. We like best friends. We do everything together. My mom even said, like, going out with your with like people of your age. I was like, no, nah, I want my little sister next to me. Cause like we create a bond, like we understand each other. Of course we fight, you know, who don't fight anything? Sisters plus in the same house for little things. But it's like a minor thing. It's not a thing like it used to be before, you know. We we have a better uh, relationship, my mom, my dad, I love my sister. I love to talk to people as well. And people that are going through the same thing I went through, I like to tell them, look, I used to be like that, but it doesn't have to be like that. You don't have to close yourself and go through all these things by yourself. You can actually change. So yeah, I'm, I'm so happy. I find the love. My parents, first I started to give them love to give me back because when they were younger, they didn't have, so that's why they were not giving it to me because they, they didn't have what to give. So now I give them and I receive back, you know? So it's, it's wonderful. My dear friend, doesn't matter your religious, doesn't matter where you are and how size your problem is. Jesus, he sacrificed for you, for me, for us to find life and life more abundantly. That's why tomorrow, Friday, in our spiritual claims, we're going to be determined. Yes, we're going to be determined that uh, our Lord Jesus is going to be in our lives. We're going to be determined that the curses, the pain, the, the sadness, the sickness, the depression. Maybe you are watching me, you are depressed. And you tried in many ways, you knock at many doors, but you didn't find a way out. You know, tomorrow, Friday, We'll not be here remembering the death of Jesus, but we're going to be celebrating the beginning of the victory because he overcame. When he said it is finished, you know, the, the was the end of our suffering, was the end of our pain. That's why you should not carry this problem anymore. But in order for this word, for the, prob the power of God, I mean, in order for the power of God to be in you, it is important that you give your step of faith because maybe you have been praying, maybe you have been watching testimonies, but what needs from you is a decision of stand up from wherever you are and to join us. If you want help, tomorrow we'll be here. We're going to have four services tomorrow, Good Friday, 10 o'clock in the morning, midday, also at 3 p.m. and at 5 p.m. You can join us in Stockholm, we're going to be here in Stockholm. I'll be here the whole day in Stockholm at the Birgers Gotten 106. Or you can join us in Gothenburg. We have our branch in Gothenburg on the Rigging Garten 13 in the same times. What you need to do is to call us to Texas. As you know, we are living here in Sweden and also in the great majority of the, of the places of the world. 
we are leaving restrictions and because of that it's important that you book your time to join in one of our prayers. But if you don't want to come to the prayer itself, you just want to pass by, you just want to pray here before the altar, you, you'd like to talk to someone, you need some counsel, you need some help, you need some advice, you can also call us and text us, okay? We'll be here available to help you and to prove to you that Jesus sacrificed, the sacrifice of Jesus was not in vain, but he died for us to receive life and life more abundantly. Let's continue watching now the story of this lady and we'll be back with you straight after. If you'd like to continue calling us, we have uh, our people available to talk to you. Call us, text us, we're gonna have the pleasure to help you. Watch this testimony. I didn't believe that I could change. I didn't believe that I could be a different person, a new person. I didn't think I was good enough for anything. I didn't think I could make a difference. And um, I became really suicidal. I wanted to die, I really did, because I thought, okay, if I can't change, if I can't make a difference, if I can't, if I'm not good enough for anything, I didn't really see the point of living. But at the same time, I was scared of dying. To the point that, to cross the roads even, I would never cross the roads like halfway, like the midpoint of crossing the roads. I would always make sure I went to the traffic light and even going to the traffic light to cross, I was really like paranoid. A relationship that I got involved in um, led me to believe that I wasn't good enough. Um, but then not only from what I was hearing, also from what I was seeing as well, to me I thought it was true because there was many things that I wasn't good at, many things I could not do. So I believed that I wasn't good enough. I believed that everything I'd been through was just preparing me for more suffering in the future. So they were telling me negative things. Um, but I saw it as a, as a way, I thought it was true. When they'll say these things to things, I didn't see like, oh, they'll do something wrong. I just thought it was true, like what they're saying, because I could see it with my own eyes. That's what um, created my mindset. My mindset was based upon everything I'd been through and things that I was hearing. So I'll hear ne negative things at home as well. Um, like I wasn't good enough, just similar things out here at home too. So for me, it wasn't really anything new. The only thing is that this person, like, I respected this person. I thought this person was there, there to, um, you know, like that cared for me. Um, so this all started from when I was young, not too young, probably about 10, 11. So yeah, so it didn't really, what I used to face at home, it didn't really affect me that much because I still, Whilst I was growing up, I was still like, you know, just doing things like living my life. I was just living as a normal person, to be honest. When I was alone, I'd get like so many thoughts. I wake up in the morning, so many thoughts in my mind, just everything, just flashbacks. I'd be hearing the same things, the same things that they would tell me. I was hearing those same things over and over again in my mind. Even after everything had stopped, even after everything stopped, I still used to remember everything, like just randomly, I just remember be sitting down, just thinking, it was just coming to my mind, like a cycle. So even though I was not facing those situations anymore, it was still affecting me as if it was happen happening at present. Um, I started realising that this was a big problem when I would, I was in the help centre, I'd be trying to change, but I didn't realise why I wasn't changing, I didn't realise why I wasn't moving forward. I had to really look deep down and see why I wasn't changing and I found that my mind was really negative. I saw that I didn't believe that I could change. The challenges I faced was not believing because of course faith is the assurance you believe in something that you cannot see. And for me I hadn't really seen my change yet but I didn't believe it was possible because of everything I'd been through, because of my, my negative mindset. The situations that I was facing in a relationship um, really led me not to believe in myself, not to believe that I could change. Because I allowed those words, rather than making me someone else stronger and tougher, I allowed those words to to put me down. I believed it as, as, I, as I heard it, that's how I took it. I took it as I heard it. I didn't really digest it or think that maybe it means something else or means that. I just saw it as how it was said. Upon coming to the church, I would hear the word of God and I believed that was true. I, I knew that was true but I didn't really think it applied to myself. So I believed it for other people, but I didn't really believe that I could change, that I could really receive the promises of God. I found it really hard to really take the word of God on, on board because whenever I would 
hear something positive, I'll receive it with joy, I'll be so glad, I'll be happy, I'll be encouraged, motivated. But then later on, everything I've been through, everything I've heard already from someone that I respected, those words will come back in my mind and will eliminate, yeah, will like erase the positive things that I had received. So I had to realise that to believe is a choice that I have to make. So I would take one thing, like just maybe a small sentence from the word of God, and every day the same thing, I would meditate on that, I would really read and really think about what I was reading, really repeat it to myself until I really believed. I chose to put my faith in that word that I had received. So for example, if I read something that said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, and then later on during the day, during the week, I get thoughts saying, oh, I can't do that. No, that's not possible. I can't do that. Like, you know you can't do that. When I, receive, when I get those thoughts in my mind, then I would use the words that I took and say, no, I can do everything. I can do all things through Christ. I can do anything. So that's how things started changing for me. So after just a couple of months, I started seeing that I was getting more positive, believing in myself more, and just doing things that I didn't really do before. Today, I do believe in myself. I'm still like working, still pushing for my potential. And I believe in my potential. I believe in the Meredith that I can and will become. Come Holy Spirit To touch me To hold me To be your presence is everything I need, the truest friend to me. I raise my hands to worship you, to surrender all my heart to you. As broken as I am, you love me, you love me. As wretched as I am, you love me, you love me, Jesus in your love. You died on the cross for me, the burden of my sins you took away, you healed my pain and gave me life. Jesus, in your love, you died on the cross for me, the burden of my sins you took away, you healed my pain and gave me life. Jesus. Jesus, what a precious name. How many of us go about our daily lives forgetting what has been done for us on that day? Through his sacrifice, all our problems were given a solution. Until this day, we still ask why. Why do I feel lonely? Why am I sick? Why doesn't God help me? Why am I so depressed? Why do I even need God? My life was literally a mess. I was suffering inside and out. So when I reached secondary school, my eyes kind of opened. Um, to the boys, to um, music, swearing, and I literally done everything I needed to do to call the attention of God. I'm literally just a transformed person. I don't suffer with any of the problems, any of the addictions anymore. And literally, it's, I only have God to thank for that. My life was a mess. I was destroyed on the inside. And because of hate, because of grudges, my life literally took a toll. By coming to the help center, I was accepted as I was. God gave me a new life. This Good Friday, 
come to put an end on all your difficulties, troubles and worries. Join us at any universal church near you. Let your Friday be a good Friday. My dear viewer, we are getting closer to the end of this program. It was a pleasure to be with you. If you'd like to know more about our Universal Church here in Sweden, as all over the world, you can visit our website, www.uckg.sc, or you can watch our movie that has the story of the Church, of the Universal Church. Uh, from the beginning, we have a movie that calls Nothing to Lose One and Nothing to Lose Two, that speaks about the story how that faith came, how God inspired a man that was Bishop Macedo, and through him he brought this ministry that has been helping so many people all over the world. It's not him, but it's God that used him for this great ministry. If you'd like to know, you can watch on Netflix. Nothing to lose one and nothing to lose two, okay? It was a pleasure to be with you. Until next time, may God bless you. in this hospital until I know what's wrong with my daughter. Do you want out? That's fine with me.